I agreed to deliver this man to your prison. But under the circumstances, I would prefer not to take pay for this particular job. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, Mr. Paladin, not going to like this, uh, not even 11 o'clock yet. Yeah, don't worry about it, my boy. Just wake him up. He'll be glad you did. But uh, you not understand. Hey, Mr. Paladin sleep late in the morning when he's out gambling night before. Yeah, never you mind. Just do as I say. Oh, Mr. Mr. Paladin. Mr. Paladin. Uh, go away, hey boy. Go away. I have gentlemen to see you, Mr. Paladin. Uh, then both of you go away. Oh, what I tell you? I've got to see him. When Mr. Paladin say, hey boy, go away... Hey, boy, go. Uh, tell him I have $2,000 for him. Oh, that don't make any difference to me, Mr. Paladin. Tell him. Mr. Paladin, this man say he has $2,000 for you. He, he caught a sleep already. Hey, boy, oh, oh. what are you standing around in the hall with this gentleman for? Show him in. Holy moly. Hey, Mr. Paladin, you lose all your money last night? Never mind, never mind. Goodbye, hey, boy. Yes, sir. Oh, goodbye. Hmm. Now, you'll excuse my appearance. I spent the evening with a client. and uh, yeah, No uh, matter, no matter. My name is Finletter. I'm a lawyer. My client in Nevada has a matter he'd like you to take care of for him. Who is your client, Mr. Finletter? Uh, it's, uh, it's all right here in this document. If you'll just read and sign it. Well, oh. let me see first. I, Paladin, do hereby agree to deliver post-haste the person of one Jeremy Thompson to the governor of the state of Nevada. The governor. Upon delivery at Carson City, I will be paid $2,000. Well, Mr. Finletter, I'm not a bounty hunter, nor am I a lawman. I don't transport prisoners. Uh, Mr. Paladin, uh, I forgot to mention there's a $1,000 expense money... Uh, Payable immediately. And why doesn't the governor use his law enforcement officers to do this job? Uh, it's a somewhat delicate matter. Personal matter between the governor and this Jeremy Thompson. I see. There's also the fact that no jail nor any officer has been able to hold Thompson for any reasonable length of time. Can he be so bad as all that? Well, I'll let you judge for yourself. Wilson? Oh, Wilson. He sent along a pair of special handcuffs. Here's the key. Ah, yes. The governor does well to be cautious. He certainly is a vicious-looking devil. Uh, Mr. Paladin, hmm? that's uh, Wilson you're looking at. That's... Uh, oh, 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 I'm sorry. The I... other uh, gentleman is Jeremy Thompson. Hello, Jack. It's me, all right. And the governor is willing to pay $2,000 for this... This boy? Now, if you'll just sign this paper, Mr. Paladin. All right, but I feel like I'm stealing the governor's money. <laughs> We're glad you think so, sir. Uh, unshackle him, Wilson. Oh, now, just a minute. I didn't know I was to take charge of him now. I'm afraid he's your responsibility now, sir. Oh, and by the way, Mr. Thompson has an accomplice whom no one has seen, Mr. Paladin. You just might have your hands full. Good day, sir. Come along, Wilson. Yeah. Uh, well, Thompson, I haven't even had my breakfast yet. Well, neither is I, matey. Order up for two, huh? Constipation is something people don't talk much about, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs... It's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Now, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting. 
a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Well, pleasant-tasting chocolated X-Lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. X-Lax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Over breakfast, my cherub-faced prisoner announced that he was certain that his partner would never allow me to get him as far as Carson City. We took the inland stage, and by the time we reached Elk Grove, some 40 miles from San Francisco, the passengers had dwindled down to two people besides Thompson and myself. One was a very old woman with a staring eye that was hard to ignore. The other was a portly whiskey drummer whose red face marked him as his own best customer. Hey, lady, uh, ain't I seen you somewhere before? This thing is what I call it. Handcuffing his own son. I said, ain't I seen you somewhere? San Francisco or somewhere? When I was a girl, my father shot a man used to handcuff his son. The old gaucho thinks I'm your son, Paladin. She must be blind as well as deaf. I could swear I know that lady from somewhere. Oh, officer, my name is Pierpoint. Oh, sure. Paladin. Ah. Where are you taking your prisoner to, Mr. Paladin? Boy is handsomer than you are. He's a prisoner, ma'am. He's not my son. Thought so. Has your eyes. Close set like. <laughs> Buy yourself out of that one, matey. Mother must have been fair. She gave him uh, the look. Sorry I set the old girl off, Mr. Paladin. Usually don't talk to ladies on these trips. Get them started, you can't shut them up. <laughs> it's all right. I thought I'd seen her face somewhere, yeah, though. I go all the way to Well, there she goes again. Lillian, be there to meet me. Lillian's my daughter. Oh, oh there. Oh, there. Oh, now. How's that? What do you say? Anyone catch that? I will. What are we stopping there for? I just ain't nowhere at all. I don't know. Does anybody know why we're stopping? Driver, what's the matter? I got bad news, folks. Have a horse that's running lame. Oh. We'll have to stop and rest him. What's he say? A lame horse, man. I knew uh. it. I wanted Lillian to marry a blacksmith uh, yeah. once, but do you suppose she'd listen to me? Whoa. Oh, it's hotter than the hinges of Hades, driver. Tried to get as close to that tree as I could. Now, you folks can all sit there until we're ready to go again. These dang things never break down in town. Aren't you going to help a lady down? Lady, I didn't bring you. Get yourself down. I'll give you a hand, ma'am. Well, how do you know I didn't buy off the driver, Paladin? Maybe my partner's to meet us here. And... Out you go, Thompson. Oh, all right, mate. Don't get your dander up. <laughs> Probably worried to death about me. We'll sit here, Thompson. Here, old girl, take a swig of this. <laughs> Things won't look so bad. <laughs> it's mighty kind of you, but I... Uh, you'd be apt to regret it, Mom, in this heat. Oh, let her drink it, let her drink it. Maybe she'll fall asleep the rest of the trip. Well, it's only fair to warn her. Son, you ain't rid these stagecoaches with as many wind bags as I have. Whiskey usually shuts them up Mary good and proper. Bummer, oh, there she goes in. again. <laughs> Want a snort of this, Paladin? No, thanks, Mr. Pripoint. What you, sonny boy? Your tongue must be about to dry up and fly away. No, thanks, mate. My old mother told me not to touch the stuff. Lillian had a strong oh, mind me. for a long time. Ah, she came home something. with a buffalo hunter one time. Any of you ever smelled a buffalo hunter? Tell us, Mother, what did he smell like? Yes, he certainly did. Folks, I can't push that horse anymore. We're going to have to spend the night here. Oh, no. Driver, how soon are you going to unhitch your horses? Right away. Why? I thought I'd shackle my prisoner to one of your wheels. He'll be safe that way. All right with me. Lillian soon saw the error of her ways. My good man, let me taste that whiskey. <laughs> Trip. Don't forget the phone. Wherever you go this summer, keep in touch with home by long distance. Thank you, operator. You calling your mother? Uh, let me talk to her before you say goodbye. All right. I'm getting her now. Hello? Hello, mother. Yes. 
Oh, we're having a fine trip, and the weather's perfect. You getting along all right? Good. Now, if you need anything, be sure to call Barbara next door. When you're away this summer, put long distance to work for you to keep in touch with the folks back home while you're away. You'll have a carefree trip knowing everything and everyone at home is okay. Long distance rates are low. Why not call now? I watched the old lady tip the bottle to her lips. Then I looked at the boy's face. He was watching the woman, agonizingly. In that moment, Jeremy told me more than he ever intended. I fastened him to the stagecoach wheel, the handcuff passing over the iron band so there was no chance of his getting away. When night fell, I made a bed for him in the road beside the wheel. I made my own bed nearby and laid down to sleep. But it was no use. Oh, no. sleep, eh? With those two. Oh, she promised she'd never touch a drop of it again. Is she your partner, boy? Aye. It's her. Who is she? She's me mother. Your mother? Did you ever hear of Jenny Birdwell? Jenny Birdwell? The same. Oh, it doesn't make any difference now. But the governor rang me. She said she'd never touch it again. I saw Jenny Birdwell 20 years ago in Boston. Our American cousin? Yeah, she was wonderful. But 20 years couldn't do that to a woman. Oh, 20 years of drinking could do it. What a shame. And I actually thought she was going to get me free. She said she had a way. But Jenny Birdwell was American. My old man was English. She had a mind reading act. Came to this country in 43. When I was a little tot, Jenny's earring started to go. She started to drink. So we left her and took me back to England. I see. I was only four when the old man died. His sister had to raise me. When I thought I was grown enough, I came over here to look for Jenny. How did you happen to find her? Oh, uh, I spent three years looking. I found her all right. On the Barbary Coast. Ah, uh, Barbary Coast. Uh, it ain't no place for a lady. I convinced Jenny that we should go back to England and start all over again. But we needed money. So I decided to kidnap the governor's daughter. And that's your hanging offense, huh? Ten thousand dollars I'd figured to ask for her. That was before I'd seen how ugly she was. So I hid her out in a cave. There was a time I figured they'd never ransom her. And all the while, she wanted to stay with me. Finally, I dropped it to two thousand. They, they came through with the money. Huh? I'm sorry. The temptation. The temptation was too much for well, me. Easy now, Jenny, easy. You're not yes. walking too well. You yes. may fall. Yes. Yeah. I tried, Jeremy. I tried, like I promised you. Easy now, indeed. Yes. Uh, yeah, you better get in the coach, Jenny. You'll have the whole seat to lie on now. In you go. Uh, uh. Is, is she all right? Yes. Stand I've... where you are, sir. What? I'll be forced to shoot you. Tell the old girl sober. All right, throw your gun on the ground. Do it. I'll have the key to the handcuff. Jenny, I thought you was drunk. The key, Mr. Farrington. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Jenny, girl, you're still the greatest actress in the world. Angie, I can't believe you papered this room. I did. Just followed one of those how-to-do-it books. Fred didn't help you? Lately, he's had nagging backache with sleepless nights and feels worn out. A person doesn't feel up to much with backache. Better tell him to try Doan's Pills. Good advice. That's Doan's Pills, an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains, may come on with overexertion, emotional upsets, or everyday stress and strain. 
Doan's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doan's pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doan's pills today. To save money, buy Doan's big economy size. Jenny Birdwell stood like a fragile old bird clutching the gun in her quivering hand. Her face mirrored great pride as she told her son she had only pretended to swallow the liquor. While she held the whiskey drummer and the driver at gunpoint, Jeremy handcuffed me to the wheel. Then he rounded up the two best horses and they rode off. The drummer found a pistol in his bag and shot the handcuffs free. I mounted a horse and rode in the direction they had gone. By morning, their trail led towards an abandoned mountain shack. The two horses stood outside. As I rode up, Jeremy and his mother ran out. The old lady mounted her horse like the devil was after her. Hey, Jenny, wait. You might get hurt. Wait, Jenny. Oh, well. Hello, Jack. Looks like you and me again. Get your hands up, Jeremy. All right. But I ain't armed. Why didn't you run with her? Ah, this way at least Jenny goes free. <laughs> Look at her. There's a lot of bounce in the old girl yet, huh? Uh, it certainly is. Well, where to now, Paladin? Back to the stagecoach, then to Carson City. You won't have to force me anymore. I'm tired of running. Somehow I believe you, Jeremy. Here you are, Mr. Paladin. $2,000. Well, that isn't why I'm here, Governor. But it's yours. It's part of the bargain. I got a new bargain for you, Governor. You bargain? Mm-hmm. The $2,000 is yours if you don't hang Jeremy Thompson. Hang him? <laughs> my good sir, bringing that boy back is a festive occasion. He's going to marry my daughter. Marry your daughter? Well, then why is he in jail? Mr. Paladin, do you have daughters? No, I have no family. Then this may be rather hard for you to understand. You see, Brunhilde is the eldest of three daughters. The other two are married. Brunhilde is not, and she's almost 37. She and this Thompson boy spent some time together, and, uh, <clears throat> well, Brunhilde is in love with Thompson. So that's why he was worth so much to you. <laughs> you can see the money is well spent, Mr. Paladin. Take it. You've earned it. No, I can't, Governor. I brought this man in because I had contracted to do so. But, well, there were certain circumstances which made me prefer not to bring the boy in. Uh, uh, do you understand? Not quite. Well, Governor, what happens if the boy refuses to marry your daughter? I'll give him a few weeks in jail to think about it. Then we'll hang him. I see. Even at that, I doubt if there'll be a wedding. Sir? And under the circumstances, I would prefer not taking pay for this particular job. Yes, what is it? Excuse me, sir. Of course, Miss Henry, come in. I didn't want to interrupt, but we've had a stroke of luck. How's that? But there's an old lady outside who wants the job as cook at the prison. Wonderful. That is good news, Miss Henry. Has she had any experience? Yes, sir, in several institutions back east. She says. Well, does she realize that she also has to serve the men in the prison, take food into their cells? Yes, sir. I told her, and she said that she wasn't afraid. What do you think, Miss Henry? Oh, I think we should hire her. She's quite vigorous, old lady. I think she would be more than capable. What's her name? Miss Birdwell. Birdwell. Do you know her, Paladin? Uh, no. No, no, sir. I don't think so. Uh... Very well, Miss Henry. Tell her she's hired. Start her right away. Yes, sir. Oh, Paladin, do you realize what a feather in my cap this is? How's that? Why, how many women do you know who would cook for 27 hardened criminals? Um, enough, Governor. What do you mean by that? Enough to cause me to change my mind. I'll take that $2,000. <laughs> Miss Wong. Uh, pardon me. Oh, Miss.
Miss Wong. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Paladin. Well, what do you want? <laughs> that paper you're reading is mine, is it not? Oh, yes, sir. But Mr. Wong read about Tong War. Oh, terrible thing. And Hey Boy. What about Hey Boy? Oh, his name in paper, too. See? Ah. Oh. I don't understand why Hey Boy doesn't stay out of these affairs. Oh, Hey Boy, important man in Tong. Has to fight. Well, one of these days, Hey Boy is going to... Hey, what's this? What's this? Carson City Prison Break. Oh, listen to this, Miss Wong. Okay. Last Monday at Carson City, Nevada, 27 desperate criminals made good their escape from the state prison. Oh. According to Governor Orson J. Bjorstad, they took with them as hostage an old woman who had recently been hired as a cook. <laughs> Just as I expected. Well, Mr. Parler, then, uh, what you start to say about Hey Boy? Oh, uh, oh, just that one of these days, if Hey Boy doesn't stay out of these Tong Wars, he's going to end up in jail. Eta, maybe you better talk to him, Mr. Paladin. Well, if you think it'd do any good. And when you go downstairs, tell Hey Boy to come up. But I want to talk to him. Oh, Eta, thank you, Mr. Paladin. Next time you refresh... Enjoy a frosty, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Sociability, Charlie. All right, Kay, how's this? Pepsi is light. Refreshes without filling. You like to refresh? Have a Pepsi right now. Well, offer it to everybody, Charlie. I will. Enjoy Pepsi at the fountain. It's delicious at home, too. Have one at lunch or with a snack. Charlie. At the beach or at dinner. Wherever you go, wherever you're thirsty, Pepsi is there. It's here, too, in our Be Sociable song. Be sociable, look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi, drink light, refreshing Pepsi, stay young and fair and get an air, be sociable, have a Pepsi. For the weekend, have plenty of Pepsi around. Pick up an extra carton today. CK, I'm sociable. With Pepsi, everyone is. Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Harris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun Will Travel by Tom Hanley. Featured in the cast were William Redfield, Joseph Kearns, Parley Bear, Jack Moyle, Tim Graham, and Peggy Weber. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel.